What's going on, Paisanos? V here, coming at you guys with my Prank Kids deck profile. I recently won the GenCon, well, one of the GenCon winner mats uh, this past weekend, and I did it with Prank Kids, and I felt like Prank Kids can catch a lot of players off guard. Prank Kids could definitely make a lot of players have to read every single one of your cards. And I don't think a lot of players in this game right now properly know how to respond to a Prank Kids player. I don't think they properly know how to respond to the chain blocking that this deck can consistently do. I mean, a lot of players are really looking forward to um, going ahead and making sure that your opponent is, you know, that they don't activate that Numeron field spell. But do you know what Prank Kids plays do? Do you know what any of the extra deck does in Prank Kids? Once again, like I said, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you my main side extra that I use. I'm gonna tell you some changes I would make. And this is before the link one comes out. We'll talk about that once I get the link one. I'll probably do another video. Um, I'm changing up a little bit. I'm filming this video on my GoPro. I want to see how it looks and how it sounds. And uh, my voice isn't the best right now. It's still a little bit messed up. But I want to see the quality of this video. So I'm going to try it on this one. And don't worry about this gorgeous mat that was sent to me by um, Imperium Duelist. I'll have another video coming out discussing a bunch of the mats, including this mat right here that was sent to me by them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my main side extra. And then I'm going to talk about certain changes. So right to get ready to have three prank kids placed. This card is obviously the... The main card in the deck that you need right now. If you don't have Prank Kids Place, you really can't play it. It has to be as, as a three of. Uh, up next, we have Prank Kids Pandemonium. This is the uh, fusion card that you could do on, during the main phase of either yours or your opponent's uh, turn because it's a quick play. I played two Prank Kids Pranks. This is a great card, don't get me wrong, but I feel like you only need to play one. You don't care about any other version. The minute you play one, you're fine with this. You don't need to play multiple copies. That's why I only run it as a two of. Um, the fact that you can recycle cards in your graveyard back into your deck also makes it, sure, makes it so you don't need stuff like Pot of Avarice, which is a great card, but you can search this out. And it's, and it's about a half a pot of Avarice. Also, if you only, only, only open one Prank Kids uh, monster and you have other Prank Kids cards, uh, you can discard and make a token. So that's another reason why I like this card a lot. <clears throat> the alternative fusion we have is going to be three polymerization. I don't know if this is going to last throughout the new Link 1 coming out. But as it stands right now, this card is like one of the main cards in the deck to really get your play started without being locked. Because when you activate Prank Kids place, you're basically locked. With polymerization, you're really not locked to, uh, to Prank Kid monsters. We're going to be running two Pod Desires. So this is a 41 deck count. I feel like you could cheat a 41 deck count uh, with this deck, you know, because normally I only like 40. It's not a 40 or 60. But the reason you can do 41, even 42, if you run Pod Desires. That's why I really upped the count to 41. I'm running two Pod Desires, and it works perfectly well. We also have Fusion Recycling Plant. This is another field spell. And what this does is you can discard a card to add polymerization to, from your uh, deck to your hand. Also, uh, whatever you use for polymerization, the material, if it's in the graveyard during the end phase, you can add that back. I don't necessarily always do that play, uh, just, just as I, you know, because I don't really need it, but it's also something good to have. We also have Invocation, another way to uh, use polymerization since we only have three polymerizations. Uh, ultimately, we want seven ways to fusion summon. Uh, and, and eight if you really want to talk about the instant fusion uh, that you're going to use to get your uh, prank kids rocket right out. So it's up to you how you want to do it. If you want to count this or not, you still got to add this into the deck. It's still needed. It's still a great top deck. And throughout the weekend, I did top deck this card. And of course, you have Monster You're Born because what's not better than bringing a card back after you get in the beard and then continuing your play? So that's another thing I like about this deck. All right, as far as pranking monsters, we're running all three of them, okay? We're running Dropsies, we're running Roxies, we're running Fire Seas, <laughs> um, and then we're running the green guy, Loftus. Everyone knows Loftus. It's a big hit with the ladies. So that's basically how prank kids count. I think we're going to maintain it. We might cut down Roxies to one with the new Link one, but once again, when that deck profile comes out, I'm going to do a lot of testing, and then we're going to talk about that. So this is the card I've been running that I love. It's called King of the Swamp. This card has two effects. Number one, you can discard it to add polymerization from your deck to your hand. That's insane. Number two, if you open a prank kid, a, fus a way to fusion that prank kid, and King of the Swamp, this card will sub for one of the prank kid monsters, which is actually really good. This card is amazing. Actually, I, I, I didn't even know I, that I didn't play this card in my deck until uh, recently. But yeah, this card is absolutely needed. So... Only hand I run realistically is three Ash Blossom and Joy Spring. That's one of the things I'm going to change. I would I would increase the amount of hand I would run. Another card I, I run, which I definitely want to increase, is going to be Denko Seka. I love this card. And especially the format we're going into, you either play against a control deck, a stun deck, or a combo heavy deck. That's the kind of deck decks that are in the metal right now. 
and when Denko Seka, it just by itself stops all control decks. Like you summon it and you go, do you have judgment? They go, no, you go, okay, that's great. You, I'm going to do whatever I want and you're gonna have to watch me now. You still have your hand traps, but have fun playing those. So I think Denko Seka is a huge card against every stun deck. I think a lot of players don't expect this card. Um, I would probably up it, up it more. The other cards I did run, which I would change, um, would be, uh, I, read, I tried out one Red Blossom on the root and two Parallax Seeds. You just don't need these. I'll be honest with you. You just don't need these whatsoever. I understand that Parallax Seeds can help you make into a Abyss Dweller, but it's just not that big of a deal. And Red Blossom on, on the root is a cute tech card, but in a deck full of amazing combos that's really uh, static as far as which exactly what you want to do every single turn, this is a cute little play that you just also don't need as well. So I would change these out. I would probably make it a third Denko and then two Ogre, um, or maybe like instead of a third Denko, maybe a Terraforming and two Ogre. I would probably consider doing that. I really don't want these those three in my deck moving forward though. And the last card, of course, is going to be Prank Kids Plan. This card absolutely is a powerhouse of a card. Um, a lot of people forget it. Even when I remind my opponents constantly, they still forget this card. It is huge. And it can save you an extra turn. It can allow you to go ahead and go into more plays. Like, like as far, when, you, when you set it and then activate it to Link Summon. Like, this card has a lot of usage. I don't like playing it at two because I don't like opening this card. I more or less like dumping the card. So that's why I only play it as a one of. Um, but yeah, it's, it's still a phenomenal card and definitely needed within the deck. So let's talk about side deck techs. Obviously, I'm not running like Lightning Storms. I don't have that card. Uh, I'm not gonna even consider looking at consider looking at the card until after the ban. So I'll talk about don't talk about looking into the card. I'm personally not even looking to buy the card. Uh, but what I do have is three Nibiru. I mean, you're still playing against combo decks. A lot of combo decks are still very susceptible to this card. I feel like you don't need to main it, but you definitely could definitely should side it. Um, I run, I run the two ogres. I run them in my side. Uh, I really want to run them in my main. I would run two ogres in the side and probably, I mean, two ogres in the main and one in the side. That's probably what I would consider doing. Um, I run two token collectors. I would up this, I would up this as well. There's a third Denko Saka that I would put in the deck so I'll have extra slots for the side deck. Another thing too is I run three Mystical Space Typhoons. Not that I don't like Cosmic Cyclone. Not that I don't like Twin Twisters. I think with this deck you don't have a lot of resources to be pitching away with Twin Twisters. And with Cosmic Cyclone, this deck goes into time a lot. Just by the natural nature of the way the deck plays. Because you're, you're, you're really pronouncing, enunciating every single one of your uh, chain links. So it really makes it hard for your opponent. Because especially if they have a way, they, they, if they want to respond to you, they're going to want to wait for the opportunity to go in and drop a chain link on you. Most players don't go, I don't have nothing, but they can plash your turn. So you're announcing your chain links. You're doing your plays, you're trying to do it fast, but it does take time, it's just how the deck works. So I think MST is very important for that, because if you Cosmic Cyclone, and they and, and they just end their turn in time, you lose. So why not play this card? And this card actually was really good for me. Uh, I had a lot of those Nimrod field spells. This card I highly recommend it. And people are sleeping on MST. They're looking at Twin, they look at Cosmic Cyclone, but they're not looking in the broad reality of the situation. I think this card is really underrated right now. And once a lot of you players get get a, get a hold of it, I think it's gonna really change the way uh, the side actually done moving forward. Besides Lightning Storm, obviously. And of course we have Elite Match, another phenomenal card. Elite Match is good against control decks, that's just call it for what it is, as well as a red reboot. So I mean, I, obviously you can see by the, by my side deck, I really heavily emphasize on going against control because this deck's hardest matchup is control decks. My hardest matchup playing uh, uh, prank kids was playing against an altergeist deck because it was literally, I had to put them back a turn every, every, every turn, and if I didn't, if you went ahead of me on a turn, um, then I was gonna get blown out. I knew that. So that's that's why you needed all these cards to really slow your opponent down. Or still gonna just rip you apart. So I played two of the prank kids, Kakadu the dude. I call him Chicken. Two Chicken, uh, two Dog. You don't need three of anything. Anyone said you're dating that you need three of They don't know what they're talking about. Prank kids. I'm telling you, two is more than enough. Especially the fact that you can recycle these cards. Um, I won this card a lot actually. This card, uh, Rooster, is really good. It's a heavy storm. It's a Link 4 heavy storm that you can use as a quick effect. Really good card, actually. And then for other Link monsters, I just want to throw in there because I want to have access to it. Uh, Mech Knight Crusader Aramax, which this deck can easily do. We also had Boron Sword, this deck can also do with that as well. And Access Code Talker. So this deck can go into Link 4s if you don't use Prank Kids Pandemonium. And it can really do it relatively easily. And uh, I personally like Mech Crusader Aramax. There's a lot of decks, kind of, a lot of play, I should say. Uh, forgot about the card and how good the card is. And then when you drop on your point, they have to read it 8,000 times. And you're like, take your time. It's a great card. So... Once again, I, I think it's something that's really important, as well as, of course, Boris Sword and Axis Code Talker.
Now, for fusions, we're going to play Rocket Ride, probably the most, the biggest fusion you go into the heaviest. I think this card is insane uh, for the deck. I, don't, I mean, if any, imagine any deck getting one of these kind of cards and a way to get to this card easily. I mean, that's basically what Prank Kids does. They, they run into this card as fast as possible, and then they pop up the entire combo. This card is huge. Um, then we got Weather Washer, another phenomenal card for the deck. I think a lot of players... Um, <clears throat> That that don't know what that that don't, don't know what this card does, uh, definitely takes the L to Weather Washer because when it attacks it, it makes all Prankage monsters Armades. So attacks your opponent, it can activate card effects. It's gonna do damage to you. It's gonna get through. It's it's still really good go like that. And defensively, um, it could it contribute itself to bringing out two Prankage monsters that can't be destroyed by I believe card effect or battle. I don't know 100. Uh, percent These cards are in German. I memorize all. I'm still learning my prank kits, getting back into the swing of things. Um, I think I believe it's card effect if I'm not mistaken. And then we have this guy right here. So the other the other Link 4 um, is a Heavy Storm. He basically is a Regeki. That's the best way to look at it. He's a fusion that needs three of the prank kits minus Roxy's. That's basically what it is. Um, and then for uh, Exceeds, we have Totally Awesome, which is that can also go into. You can easily go into Totally Awesome, to be honest with you. And Abyss Dweller, a card which I'm probably going to be cutting. I don't know what to put in, but I'm not a big fan of Abyss Dweller. I know it's pretty good, I guess. It's decent. Um, I'm just not crazy about it in this deck. I haven't really even considered going into it. I feel like with Prank Kids, if you're playing at your opponent, um, unless you go, this card's the kind of card you would go into game three. If you had a choice between a Bistol and Totally Awesome, you would more than likely go into a uh, Totally Awesome. Uh, Bistol, I think this is the kind of card you play at game three. Maybe game two if you go first, realistically game three. So anyway guys, that's my Prank Kids Zegra file. I had a lot of fun playing at the Remote Duels, more than I expected. I'm gonna have more videos coming out guys, explaining how to set up for Remote Duels. Um, I'm gonna actually shoot an email to Konami, I wanna talk to them, hopefully get a, a bit of correspondence about how to make Remote Duels more easier for a lot of players and more alluring for more players. I mean, the minute when I'm at this weekend has been phenomenal. And I won two matches, I believe, one with Ultra Guys, one with Prank Kids. I'll have, I might have an Ultra Guys profile coming up to you, discussing designs and duality of extravagance, which, which I think is something no one's Talking about as the Ultra Guys plays, I think those are the new ways to play the deck. But once again, I'll have a video coming out uh, coming out then. I appreciate you guys watching my videos uh, about prank kits. I'm definitely have more coming on the future, so make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, comment down below. It's your boy V and you, Paisanos. Well, <laughs> you Paisanos have a great day.